Okay, here we go. so much for that idea. Hi, I'm Carl Herzog, public historian for the USS Constitution Museum, and I think there are probably a couple positions I would have been qualified to serve as on USS Constitution in the early 1800s, but it appears that musician was definitely not one of them. I guess my middle school band teacher was right after all. Musician was, however, a very distinct rate uh, and a set job on Constitution throughout the 1800s and part of the importance of music on board the ship. I think when we think about music associated with sailing ships, obviously the first thing that comes to mind are sea shanties, and certainly that was part and parcel of life on board. The other aspect of music that I think the people instantly think about is in fact music like the fife and drum that were used to send messages across the deck of the ship uh, and a bosun's whistle along the same way and beat to quarters the sounding of the drum to let the crew know what had to happen. But in the case of Constitution its connections to music are incredibly vaster and far wider in part due to its rich history but also in part due to the really kind of interesting and different uh, missions that it had, particularly after the War of 1812. Musicians regularly served on board, and there was in fact an entire band on board USS Constitution throughout its Mediterranean squadrons. Occasionally, however, it was difficult acquiring musicians who could serve on the ship, and we actually have evidence that at one point during its Mediterranean squadrons in the 1830s, the Navy actually enlisted as members of the Navy an entire group of Italian national musicians to serve as musician first class in the U.S. Navy for a six-month tour of duty in the Mediterranean. Music like that was important for the ship because of the wide variety of ceremonial functions that it was performing at the time in its many diplomatic missions, as well as entertaining the crew and uh, other people on shore. That musical function continues in the U.S. Navy today with an extensive Navy band that has a variety of different branches to it, still serving some of the same sort of ceremonial function. In the case of Constitution, particularly in the early 1800s, its connection to music by virtue of having these musicians on board stretches out into stories that people would rarely ever associate with USS Constitution or the Navy or the ship's many missions at sea. In the USS Constitution Museum, we have a variety of musical instruments and other objects and archives related to music that kind of display that this diverse array of connections that music had to Constitution. For example, this is a fife made by William Callender, who was a woodturner in Boston around the time of 1812, Calendar actually made fifes for a number of ships, including Constitution, uh, that were on the Boston Station. And as we said, a fife like this was commonly used by the Marines in association with drums to pipe the crew to orders and serve other similar kinds of announcement and, and occupational functions. It's certainly the type of instrument we would expect to see and think about when we think about music associated with Constitution. This instrument, on the other hand, is probably not something you would think of associating with Constitution. This crazy looking trumpet is Nathan Adams' permutation trumpet from 1825. This is considered sort of the grandfather of all American trumpets because it was the first effort by Americans to attach valves to brass instruments. And as a result, this trumpet is of great interest to musical instrument historians. Its association with Constitution, however, is that Nathan Adams was in fact a crew member on Constitution in the Mediterranean squadron from about 1824 to 1828, and the trumpet itself again is dated 1825. Now we don't think that Nathan Adams actually designed and manufactured this trumpet while he was on board Constitution in the Mediterranean, but it's pretty certain that the trumpet was done around that time and that Adams was certainly thinking about it and working on it while he was underway on Constitution. 
According to our crew records, Adam was officially a corporal in the Marine Corps at the time, but the records indicate that he was there to serve as the bandmaster on board the ship. Adams was born in New Hampshire in 1783. He became an instrument maker in New York prior to his time on Constitution. When he was discharged from Constitution in Boston, he settled in the town of Lowell, uh, later famous for all of its textile mills, where he continued to design and manufacture musical instruments uh, in the 1830s. Adams was also a machinist and a repairman. Uh, he actually did work on early uh, daguerreotype uh, cameras, uh, as well as working at repairing marine chronometers and sextants. He uh, died in 1864. That Constitution and Adams' work on Constitution may have inspired the creation of this amazing instrument it is kind of a fun thing to think about, but Constitution's activities themselves were also inspiring music on shore throughout its history. During a time when we are glued to streaming music online through a variety of outlets that instantly share the exact same recording with all of us across the planet, it's hard to think about sometimes and remember a time when music uh, was actually written music that was spread popularly by being played locally after the music sheet music was printed and sold and distributed. This was certainly the case as early as 1812 when sheet music uh, began celebrating Constitution's victories and those songs were being sung in public spaces. This piece of sheet music called Hull's Victory was a song written about Constitution's victory uh, over Gary Air shortly after that occurred uh, and was popularly played in a variety of venues, including the Philadelphia Theater, obviously. That history of sheet music continued on even into the recorded era, however. This sheet music uh, came from the 1920s and was an old Ironsides March written by George Cobb and was distributed as part of a fundraiser, one of many fundraisers, in the 1920s to raise money for the restoration of the ship. That was a particularly huge restoration that involved several nationwide sort of fundraising campaigns and publicity and awareness campaigns. But even if it wasn't sheet music, other types of music were published and printed with the expectation that the average public could just go sing along with it. This is a broadside, again, celebrating also kind of Constitution's victories over Gary Air, And it's just a printed in a poem stanza form, but the chorus makes it clear that this was to be sung to Yankee Doodle, uh, Yankee Doodle Dandy. It's kind of a crazy set of lyrics to associate with it, but you can tell by the cadence that was the plan, and you can actually still sing it today. If you'd actually like to see a, a real shantyman taking a shot at this, our own uh, in-house shantyman, Gary Foreman, recently sung this Constitution Frigate broadside uh, for video for the Constitution Museum, and you can see that in a link in the comments on our YouTube channel. The Constitution Museum previously hosted a monthly Boston area shanty and maritime sing, uh, and hopefully we'll be doing that again soon when we can have larger groups back at the museum again. So despite all the changes in Navy ships since Constitution was actively sailing in the early 1800s, the U.S. Navy does still have an official Navy band. In fact, all of the armed services have their own bands. The Navy actually has uh, two major bands, a concert band and a ceremonial band, uh, as well as four other uh, smaller ensemble groups and an array of even smaller concert ensembles all the way down to uh, two-person uh, woodwind duos. Just as they did on Constitution in the early 1800s, these Navy band members are serving at ceremonial functions as well as entertaining for both the public uh, and members of the U.S. Navy in a variety of locations. The various ensembles today, however, stretch well beyond uh, what would have been imagined by Nathan Adams and his fellow band back on Constitution in the 1820s. Today, there is the um, full concert band, the ceremonial, essentially marching band, uh, as well as uh, a jazz ensemble, a popular music group, a country band, uh, and, uh, of course, the shanty singers. 
these are highly professional uh, musicians who are uh, auditioned to sign up and join the Navy as band members. Not unlike Constitution found itself doing when it needed band members back in the Mediterranean uh, in the 1820s. I'll have to look on their website to see if they're auditioning. Maybe I still have a chance at this. Nah, probably not.